God's people, we want to thank God for you all and a very good morning to you all wherever you are. I'm so much happy, so much delighted that you are following us and liking our page. I want to encourage you to keep on sending us messages and those people who we are meeting online, I want to say, God richly bless you. I want to speak on the subject when God steps in. And this good morning, I want to let you know as young people who are here, that the greatest want of the world is the want of men, men who will not be bought or be sold, men who in their inmost souls are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name, men whose conscience is clear to, and true to duty as a needle to the bow, men who will stand for the truth, though the heavens fall, that the book of uh, uh, education page number 53 we get from the spirit of prophecy that tells us that we need to be people who are honest in all our dealings that we need to be true to duty that the lord has called us for that we need to stand firm to be people of integrity in all aspects of life and from that angle we have the assurance of eternal kingdom god is people what do we need to understand this morning that such a character does not come as a result of accident. It is due, it's not due to special favors or endowments or of providence. A noble character is as a result of self-discipline, of subjection of the lower to the highest nature, the surrender of self for the service of love to God and man. So whenever we do all those things, they don't just come by accident. It's as a result of subjection of ourselves to the service of God. That you submit yourself, you put yourself under the feet of Christ so that he can teach you. He can impart you the character that you need as a person. God's people this morning, what is the greatest want of the world? It is not all about uh, the, the, the things that we may call uh, the, the, the great things in our life. No. Let's have a clear look at the first century when Christ called his disciples. The first century was filled with many, many good things of those times that can never be overcome by the present technology. The first century, it had filled with the philosophies of Socrates and Plato. The first century was filled with the love of pleasure. The first century was filled with the love of sport. The first century was, uh, it had, or it was filled with the, 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 the spiritual dwarf generation that never wanted even to listen to Christ who was the perfect teacher of that time. That generation passed on. And now here we are, the people of the 21st century. How are they? They are those people whom we call the digital generation. And here we see Jesus selecting some few people uh, uh, from the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 up to 20. It tells us that uh, uh, Jesus calls his disciples and he agrees with them that they meet at a place called Galilee. And when he moved to Galilee, they also came from diverse directions. And when they came, many people, um, those disciples, when they saw him, the Bible tells us that some worshipped him, but some again doubted. What is the opposite of doubt? The opposite of doubt is faith. So instead of them having faith in Christ, they doubted. And I want to let you know that the Lord himself does not bless doubt. He blesses faith. Those people who have faith in the Lord will get blessings. What about those people who have doubt in the Lord? Theirs is what we call damnation. And I want to let you know, Jesus came. The Bible tells us Jesus came. When he comes in your heart, all those doubts which are inside are just removed. They are just removed from you. When Christ descends in your heart, the bad desires of heart are removed. When Christ descends in you, dear friends, all those habits of drinking, of smoking, of adultery, they are removed in the name of Jesus. When Christ steps in, all things are made new. That's why the book of... Uh, 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 
Romans chapter 8, verses 1, it says, Therefore, if anybody is in Christ, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ, all those bad habits are removed. Brothers and sisters, this morning, I want to let you know that God is speaking to young people. And He speaks to them. He calls them arrows. The Bible tells us from the book of Psalms 127, verses 4, it says, let's start from verse 3, Law, Law children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is the reward, is his reward. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of their youth. Now, let's have a look of what we call an arrow. It is an offensive weapon. And sometimes, it can be used as a defensive weapon. I want to let you know, when God gets you, He makes you, in your bad characters, He transforms you and be, He turns you into go, your life into a good uh, character turns your character into the good side of it. When we see an arrow can be used for an offense, but here God calls young people as arrows so that they can do their best in his, life, in his work as arrows in a mighty warrior. So are children born in somebody's youth. God's people you are young, and so you can be used in his ministry with your intellectuality, with your ability, the Lord can use you at this present time. He tells us, in the book of 1 John chapter 2, verses 14 onward, it says, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him who has been from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because Ye are strong, and the word of the Lord abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. He has written unto you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning, and he has not rested there. He has written unto us, young people, that because he knows we are strong, and the word of the Lord, Christ himself, abides in the young people. And his words are resting in our hearts. That's why he's writing to us. God's people. He says, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1, Remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. Remember him now. This is the high time to remember your creator in this time, my brothers and sisters. This is the time Isaiah tells us, Seek the Lord while he might be found. This is the time to seek him. At your tender age, this is the time to make a decision. He keeps on telling us that if we do all those things, we have the assurance of abiding with him in his holy city. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know this morning that trusting in the Lord, it calls for a special dedication of your heart. It's not all about you yourself, but it's what Christ can do in your life. As you think about this, may the Lord keep you and give you the desire to know him more and more in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, help these young people to live life worth of your calling. For I pray in Jesus' name.